Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Hunter Tune. Today we're out at the shop working on a uh, Regal. This is a T-type Regal. Uh, it was a 3.8 liter turbo car. Uh, recently had the guy had switched over to a turbo 6 liter LS motor and he brought it up here to Hunter Tuned uh, to get some bugs worked out of it. So uh, starting off we have a 6 liter 317 heads. I think it has BTR springs and uh, BTR cam. I think it might be stage two turbo cam or stage three. I don't know exactly what cam he said it was in it. Uh, stock bottom end, ARP rod bolts, and uh, gapped, you know, stock piston rings. Uh, yeah, precision, 80 millimeter, he says. It looks like a 78 to me. Um, looks like a kind of small housing like my 7875 is, but could be an 80. I'm not too familiar with the precision stuff. Uh, we run VS Racing turbos. Um, I am a dealer for VS Racing. If any of you guys need turbos, uh, be sure to hit me up through email or like Facebook Messenger or something like that. We do sell like the uh, the new next gen 7875. I believe I probably have one of the better prices on it. Uh, so if anybody is interested in the next gen, be sure to get a hold of me. I don't have them on the website yet, uh, but we'll have them up there soon. So, anyways, like I said, the guy brought this in complaining that the car is not charging so the alternator is not actually charging the battery and we have to figure out what's going on with that and we also have to figure out why it kind of runs a little weird uh, when you give this thing throttle it does not rev up it just straight dies when you give it gas and yeah so it has Bosch 210 injectors in it uh, dual pump set up in the tank with a like dash 8 feed line uh, to a couple crossovers here. It has an aeromotive regulator. We'll have to check the fuel pressure on that guy. And uh, it is running on an MS3 gold box. Uh, he brought it up to me because there's not really a lot of gold box tuners around the area. Uh, so he brought it up here. Same ECU that's in my Mustang right now. And uh, I got the computer plugged into it right now. The key is forward, so we have computer power at the ECU. And uh, like I said, this thing's kind of just a little, doesn't run right. Um, I'll, I'll kind of give you a demonstration of what it's doing really quick. Uh, so you can kind of get a feel for what the car is doing. So I'll throw the laptop back in there. And this car just really makes me want to get my cutlass done. I can't wait to get my cutlass done. All right, so we go to crank this thing up. Oh, the battery's dead. Uh, probably because the alternator is messed up. Uh, so anyways, got to get a charger on this thing. All right, so we're going to get a charger on the battery here that is in the trunk. We're going to get something onto that uh, so we can crank the car up and I can kind of show you guys what's going on. All right, guys, so I just threw a different battery in this thing really quick. Um, I have to get a battery charger out here still, but I do have a couple charged batteries, so it's no big deal. But so we crank this thing up here. So it actually fires up pretty decent, but um, it needs a charged battery. Um, and like I said, the alternator's not charging. So I hooked up the MS, or the tuner studio on the laptops to get the tuning software going on it. You guys can see it's kind of idle surging right now. And then when, if we go to give it any gas, yeah, it just dies. So we definitely have to figure that out, see what's going on with it. And uh, I'll show you one issue that I did find already. When I start off with a new car or whatever, I kind of just go through the basics. Uh, I've kind of learned that over the years of tuning stuff. Uh, you want to kind of just go over the basic stuff first before you overcomplicate something. And uh, we're going to try to calibrate the TPS on this car because currently with the setup or the tune that is on here, the TPS at idle is reading negative 52% throttle. Uh, I'll show you that here once we get online. Turn the key back on here. Okay, that's on. Okay. So now you guys can see we're at negative 51.4% throttle. So if we give it throttle here, negative 47, negative 50, negative 30, and zero. One percent. We're about one third throttle. Actually, that's probably like half throttle actually. And then full throttle only goes to 84%. So what we're going to do is we're going to go under the tools on Tuner Studio here and under tools you can go to calibrate TPS and we're going to get the current 
throttle at closed. So we're gonna make sure that's all the way closed. And then we're gonna hit get current. And then we're gonna go to full throttle. So we're gonna hold that all the way open. And then we're also gonna hit get current for full throttle. And then shut her back down. And then we can hit accept. And now we're at, you know, 0.2 instead of negative four or 50. Uh, so it's way closer to zero now. And then when we give it just a little bit of throttle, it'll do exactly what we need it to. So that is set now. We're gonna start the car back up and kind of see how it runs and then go from there. Uh, like I said, we still have to figure out the alternator. I'm actually gonna be getting an alternator for it tomorrow because he said it wasn't charging. And the alternator that is currently on this thing is off of like a drive-by wire car, uh, which has like four pins in the alternator and the mega squirt stuff and everything usually to keep it simple you run one uh, wire from the alternator to the battery and then you run the one that excites the alternator uh, this single wire uh, plug-in right here usually goes to a single plug-in on the alternator but this is a four pin style alternator so that's not going to work we have to get a single pin uh, alternator to work with the single pin plug uh, so we're going to get that and with the mega squirt stuff, you usually run the resistor in line with a 12 volt source. Uh, it kind of just acts like a dummy light uh, to get the alternator to excite. If you run just straight 12 volts to them, you burn them up. Uh, so that's a no-go. But like I said, okay, so now we have that TPS all set up. We're gonna go in here and fucking see if this thing runs any better. Still idle surging a little bit. Uh, this car does have the closed loop on, so it should just try to kind of find 147. I'm gonna see if I can give a gas though. Yeah, it's really lean. Uh, the KPA is also reading a little bit higher than it should. Wide, o wide open throttle with no boost is reading over 100 kPa, so that is not calibrated properly either. So we're gonna have to get that figured out. Uh, and just a couple other little things with this car. Yeah, so we're gonna have to figure out um, what's going on with the... We're gonna see if it's got uh, the right injector stuff in here. Alrighty guys, we're actually taking a little bit of a break from the uh, Buick. Uh, I'm gonna wait till tomorrow to kind of work on this thing a little bit more just because uh, we have to get the alternator for it and just do a few other little things on the car. Uh, but for today, I'm actually doing a timing belt on the 2011 WRX that I have, or my girlfriend has, whatever, it's hers. So uh, we got this car like, I think like three or four years ago and bought it with like 32,000 miles on it and now it currently has 106,000 or 103,000 something like that uh it is over 100,000 miles and if you guys know subarus at all hang on i gotta turn the radio off so i don't get demonetized <clears throat> so anyways if you guys know subarus at all they have a 10 foot long timing belt and like five idler bearings for the timing belt so if any one of those little components fails, uh, the motor is garbage, and I don't feel like putting a motor in this car anytime soon. Uh, it is tuned on E85, makes around 400 wheel. Um, or I think it's like 350 to 375 wheel and like 400 torque. So this thing definitely boogies, and we smoked a clutch in it, so we put another stock replacement clutch in it because the stock clutch lasted, uh, I think, like 85,000 miles or 90,000 miles, and then it started gradually slipping and slipping worse and worse. So we just threw another stock replacement in there. Uh, I actually got it from a guy local here for like 50 bucks. Um, so like budget, everything is like a budget oriented uh, definitely on this channel. And everything that I do is price minding or, you know, I just have, I'm price conscious of everything I buy. But the timing belt, on the other hand, I definitely wanted to get new good components for it because that is a kind of a crucial thing on this car. So I went with a Gates Racing timing belt component kit. Um, actually, it's not Gates Racing, it's just Gates in general, uh, which comes with the belt, comes with the new water pump, tensioner, all the idler bearings, 
and everything like that. And I also just went to O'Reilly's and I picked up a new thermostat because this kit did not come with a new thermostat. And I figure while I'm in there, I'm gonna put a thermostat in it as well. So um, just had to pretty much remove the uh, radiator, two bolts, a couple hoses, yank that thing out, it's sitting over there. And then I also had to remove all the drive belts. So the belts that go onto the alternator, there's one that goes on the crank to the power steering to the alternator. And then the other one is for the air conditioning, which is a stretch fit belt. I was like trying to find the tensioner and take the compressor all the way off and shit. And I did not know that the AC compressor on Subaru stuff, a lot of them, uh, some of them have a tensioner, some of them don't for the AC belt, but this model only has a stretch fit belt. So I just took a screwdriver and pried it off and broke it out of there. Uh, the new one, I'm gonna be a little bit more careful. Might wrap some tape around the screwdriver or something like that to get it fit on. Uh, but anyways, we do have the whole timing belt system off of this thing and the water pump. And now I'm going to be reassembling everything. Didn't really film a whole lot of this process just because um, I didn't really know what I was doing, honestly. I kind of was just watching some videos, figuring out how to do it. And uh, here we are. So this thing is a little bit tricky because, like I said, there's two idlers on this side, the passenger side of the motor. And then you have the tensioner and another idler on the driver's side. So the belt has to do a whole bunch of weird little hoops and ladders around all the frickin' idlers and crank pulleys and uh, whatnot. So all that set up, what I did is I took the cover off of this thing and I turned it to TDC. So there's gonna be a mark down on the crank here that lines up with the oil pump. So there's a little notch on the end of the crank sensor here, or like it's on the, uh, underneath the crank sensor, there's a little notch. And then there's this white line that lines up through there. And then you kind of keep turning this thing until all your marks line up. So like the passenger side camshaft on the top is going to be straight up and down pretty much with the valve cover. There is a notch. There is a notch on the plastic cover there. So we line that up. And then the one down here, we line up with the uh, other cam. So there's two dashes on each cam and those dashes need to line up together. And then same goes for on the other side. Uh, the only thing I did notice that is a little bit scaring me right now is because when I pulled the timing belt off, the driver side cams did move. Um, I don't think they moved enough to really bend anything, but they did move. So I will have to reposition those before I throw the belt back on. And yeah, so I'm just hopefully that this is gonna all work out and we're just gonna slowly put everything back together. So I'm gonna start by putting the new water pump back in. And then once the water pump is in, we'll put the thermostat in there and go from there. Yeah. So just figured I'd give you a little update on what we've been doing here, uh, staying busy. Alrighty guys, I got the old timing belt out of my Subaru and here we are, she's running. I get everything installed back onto the car and now I'm just bleeding the cooling system. Uh, there's actually a bunch of really good videos on how to do this. If you guys want to go check out some of them out, um, Speed Academy, I think, did one. Uh, Gears and Gasoline did one. And I think a few other channels did Subaru timing belt videos. And they're all very good. Just make sure that you have all your marks lined up when you put the belt on and make sure there's not like excessive slack anywhere when you get all the pulleys on um, and you'll be mint. Uh, this thing, it actually wasn't that bad of a job. Um, it sure fucking beats paying somebody to do it um, I'm, I'm assuming that this would have been like a thousand bucks if I didn't buy the parts myself and do it myself um, I mean just the parts alone the thing that sucks about these cars is they're kind of expensive to the parts are kind of expensive I'm just getting the last bit of air out of here I gotta make sure that we're good not getting hot or anything I'm waiting for the fans to come on usually you bleed the cooling system until the fans come on and then you can cap it off but as you guys can see i think my thermostat's opening now and we have a bunch of air bubbles coming out uh, it's been running for like 10 15 minutes now and i'm just starting to see these bubbles otherwise it wasn't bubbling at all uh but anyways um the thing about these cars like i was saying is they're kind of expensive the parts are um i mean a decent clutch for this car is like 500 bucks uh the timing belt kit that i got you can get like an oem replacement one for like 300 i think but a decent, good name brand Gates kit is like 500 bucks. Um, so that definitely does suck. But yeah, if you guys uh, haven't seen my little video on this car, I did one a long time ago. Um, it's just a daily driver, honestly. It's, it's a fun, spunky little all-wheel drive car. And uh, I really like it. I was gonna get this or an Evo, 
and I got this instead and I actually kind of uh, am happy that I got this instead of the Evo. Um, I feel like Evos break just as much as these things and people say that these cars are really bad but uh, like you know they, they kill rod bearings and they kill head gaskets and they you know kill everything in the motor but honestly if you maintain them just like any other car they're pretty good and one thing I don't rev this car very high I always shift it at like 6,000 rpm if I'm getting on it or anything and I think that does help quite a bit too um, I don't think these cars really like high rpm like for extended periods of time like doing highway pulls and shit uh, they're just kind of spunky get onto the highway kind of cars they're not like stay in it for 10 miles kind of car it just i feel like they don't oil that well for that kind of stuff and that's why i always run shapers in this car i run shapers 15 weight 40 in this car and in the winter i switch it to 10 30. um and it's just treated me great uh the only other thing with this thing that was kind of a bitch is the air conditioning belt uh is a stretch fit and i don't have the tool to do it so what i did is i just kind of walked it on slowly with some screwdrivers and you know turn it around until i got it to get onto the pulleys and then i had to walk it over with the screwdriver some more just kind of prying on the lips of the pulley uh, with the screwdriver to kind of walk it the rest of the way on uh, but yeah anyways guys i'm super happy this thing's awesome subaru I'm pretty sure we're pretty well bled out here. We haven't really lost any coolant. We are having a couple little bubbles yet, but uh, the fans still haven't came on. Just waiting on the fans. The temp's right in the middle. Uh, the check engine light currently is on because I forgot to plug the mass airflow in when I first started it. So that should go away. But I also have a check engine light. If anybody else with Subarus have had this issue, um, the ABS speed sensor, there we go, the cooling fans just came on. The ABS speed sensor on one of the wheels is causing um, the check engine light to come on. And when I get the code off of the ECU, it just says uh, check engine for speed sensor. And it's not the speed sensor in the tranny because the speedometer still works, but uh, it is one of the ABS sensors. And when the, when the check engine light is on at all, the cruise control doesn't work, the hill assist doesn't work, and everything else just kind of doesn't work. So it's really annoying and I want to figure out what ABS sensor it is, but I don't know what it is. And sometimes it goes away for like a month and then it comes back on for a month and then it goes away for a month. So I don't know if it's an intermediate, intermediate speed sensor issue or what is going on. But anyways, probably going to end the video here, guys. I'm going to get this thing home. And uh, yeah, should be all good to go. It's just burning off excess coolant that I spilt. Uh, I spilt a bunch on the exhaust. And I spilt some on the radiator here. That's why you can see the steam coming off. Uh, but yeah. Ryan's going to come visit tomorrow. He's going to come pick up his injectors. Uh, that's another thing I wanted to verify is the injector started working again. I don't know. Um, I told him if any of these injectors are bad, um, I definitely am going to replace them. I have a brand new set of eight coming back from Snake Eater from the first time around. And yeah, we got to get some different fuel filter situation on the car and get rid of that sponge shit that's in the fuel cell on the Mustang. And then put the new injectors in, new, new fuel filter stuff coming. And get a new flex plate on it and the Mustang should be ready to rip again. I might get some adjustable lower control arms and go hit the Grove. I don't know. We're seeing yet what we're going to do, but I have a lot of customer stuff I have to get done. This car is first on the priority list. I think we have a Civic coming and then another, uh, I don't know what it is exactly, LS swap something. Those are all on the way coming for customer stuff. So yeah, busy, busy, busy. I'm finding a lift. I think I might've found one. Um, hopefully we'll be installing that soon as well. Uh, but anyways, have a great night and a better tomorrow, guys. Um, feeling a little bit better than I was yesterday. I know I was kind of down in the dumps yesterday and the last couple days, honestly. But, man, working on something, getting something accomplished, doesn't matter what it is, always makes your day brighter. Uh, so keep your head up, guys, and uh, see you later.